If you got a chance to check out my review of the PC-2000 last May, one thing I mentioned was that center placement of the PC-2000 worked better for music listening, and when SVS was kind enough to send me another one of these bad mama jammers, you better believe I was more than happy to break out the camera for some double trouble subwoofer love. As SVS puts it, dual subwoofers will greatly increase the available system headroom, providing greater dynamic range, reduced output compression, lower distortion, and less potential for overdrive artifacts. If you like to listen at loud levels and crave a lot of slam, impact, and pressure from action and sci-fi movies, then dual subwoofers are an excellent option and will provide effortless bass on demanding passages. And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, Double the subs is exactly what this review is all about. These are the PC-2000s, standing 34 inches high, 16.6 .6 inches deep, and 16.6 .6 inches wide. These award-winning cylindrical subwoofers feature 500-watt RMS amplifiers with built-in crossover and phase controls. Weighing in at 50 pounds and offering a 12-inch driver, the PC-2000s are built to do one thing and one thing only. Bring Godzilla to your entertainment room, or allow just about any speaker on planet Earth to play much lower than they can without the help of these bazookas of bass awesomeness. How low do you ask? In-room responses in the teens, and if that doesn't make you giggle, nothing bass related ever will. Before you go tossing these subwoofers back into the corner, let's have a chat about their design and what's actually happening as a sub plays. See this port in the back? This port is an exit point for all the back waves and built up bass energy from inside the enclosure. While I can agree corner placement is a decent place to start with two subs, it has been my consistent experience that it's rarely where the subs actually sound their best. When placing a subwoofer in a corner, you are introducing two walls that by design will enhance bass and act as a giant sponge that soaks up low frequencies. For home theater use, you can get away with this easier for over-the-top explosions, but for music listening and audio files, we aren't as interested in thunderous bass rather than accurate bass. And with that being the case, Let's get these bad boys set up to perform their absolute best when it comes to music playback. First, grab a tape measure and mark off the length of the front wall from left to right. In my case, my room is just shy of 15 feet wide. Now, take whatever the width is and divide it by 4. Whatever this number is, write it down and in my case, it's 3.75 feet or 45 inches. Now. Take the same overall width again, and this time, divide it into thirds. Whatever this number is, write it down. In my case, it's 5 feet or 60 inches. With some painters or masking tape, make a strip running from the first number to the second number on both the right and left side of the room like I am showing. Oh, and make sure the tape is a good 20 inches away from the front wall, giving enough room for the subwoofers to sit behind the tape. Every room is different, and you could end up with some challenges in placing the strips of tape where I recommend. In these cases, don't worry too much about it and just work with what you have. Also, SVS is more than happy to give advice and their knowledgeable staff can assist you as well. Next, let's grab a pink noise generator for your loudspeakers. If you have an iPhone or Android, you can easily download apps that will offer this and I'll leave a link below for the app that I have used and like. Using my iPhone, which is connected via AirPlay, I can now turn on the pink noise and using a decibel meter, bring the volume up to around 80 decibels, which will be our reference level. When you reach 80 decibels on your amplifier, take note of the level or mark off the position with a piece of tape if your amp has a volume dial without markers. At this point, feel free to disconnect your main speakers. On one of the subwoofers, turn it on, set the volume control set to about 50% and the crossover around 80 hertz. Set the phase dial to zero. We will knock that out next. 
Now, bring the volume on your preamp or amplifier to the same level as before, playing the pink noise a second time and take note of how loud the decibel meter reads. Most guides out there that tackle this approach would have you match the subwoofers to the same level as the mains, but we won't be doing that today. Using the volume on the back of the subwoofer, adjust until the decibel meter reaches anywhere between 70 to 75 decibels. Obviously, you will need to leave the meter in the listening position and go back and forth a few times, but trust me, your patience will be rewarded. After repeating the same process on the second subwoofer, turn the crossover dial back to the lowest the subwoofer will go, and in the case of the PC2000s, that's 50 Hz. In these examples of setup, we have used the crossover at 80 Hz on the subwoofer which by and large is the industry standard thanks to THX. Depending on what speakers you are using and the room size, this crossover might work but I'll be honest with you. I have never in all the years I've been around in Hi-Fi found that 80 Hz is the absolute best place to have a crossover on a subwoofer. In my opinion, you are better off with the sub's crossover as low as it will go, and after listening to a lot of material, if you feel there is something missing or a gap in the bass, then start to bring the crossover up. This process can take time, and for me, trying to do it all in one listening session only leads to frustration. Some material won't even hit below 40 or 50 hertz, and trying to force deep bass out of the tracks that don't have really deep bass only leads to crappy sound. So keep it low, Joe. Real low. The PC2000 has a dial on the back for phase, so having someone help you while listening would be ideal. Essentially, as the dial is turned, you are listening for two things. Number one, you are listening for when the bass sounds the smoothest in the room, and two, you are listening for the location of where the bass is. When the phase dial is adjusted in my room, I can hear the bass extend from the kitchen all the way to the hallway. As I turn the dial, I am waiting for the moment where the bass sounds strongest in the listening room, and that's where I leave it. After completing the phase settings on both subs, feel free to connect your speakers back up to the system. Now, reach for a track of music in your collection that has repetitive, accurate bass. For recommendations, I like something with an acoustic bass and my personal favorite is Ray Brown's Solar Energy. As you listen to the track, what you are trying to listen for is even bass notes being played at or around the same volume. As Ray plays some notes, you might hear the room get more excited than others and in this case, there isn't a ton you can do without investing in room treatment or EQ. On the other hand, if you notice the vast majority of lower notes being played are obviously louder than the upper octaves, or you can easily tell where the subs are in the room, you need to turn the volume down even more. SVS sent over a few of their sound path cables to try with the rig being used today. All of the cables worked very well and sounded great, especially given the price of admission is substantially lower than a lot of the other stuff that I reviewed on my channel. The interconnect cables being my favorite of the offerings offer fantastic value and sounded very good in my listening tests. Bottom line, the sound path cables are more than functional. They are great sounding and best of all, honestly affordable. Dropping the needle on Leonard Skinner's Simple Man and allowing the Ryan R610s to handle the brunt of the work and the PC2000s crossed around 50 Hz served up giant slabs of fat rendered bass that not only hit like a semi, it also sounded darn good while doing it. Well, I've heard speedier bass come from some sealed enclosures or better yet, open baffle subs. The bass I heard certainly kept up with this track without skipping a beat. Lowest octaves on the track were covered with suspense, and when the music got cooking, the PC2000s chuckled and kept the rhythm and pace without breaking a sweat. Even when moving to more complex tracks that demand more, I tried Pines of Rome, which is arguably one of the most dynamic records I own. On this record, the orchestra hits the freeway at a chill 55, but by the time the track crescendos, you are headed straight for sonic paradise while remodeling your home all at the same time. With the pedal to the metal and reaching triple digit decibels, the PC2000s never once farted out or fell flat on their face. Hands down, 
These subs bring the goods when it comes to playing powerhouse extension. Over the last few months, I have had the pleasure of evaluating dual PC 2000s, and what I have learned from my listening sessions is once you experience the benefit of multiple subs, there is no going back. Listening to just about anything, ranging from large-scale classical, movie soundtracks, or rock and roll, the PC 2000s produce deep, low impact that completely satisfied the bass freak in me. Also, when set up correctly, the bass isn't just a matter of more bass, it's a matter of better bass, and that, my friends, is what SVS is all about.